So what is the story of the Gran Turismo movie? This video is going to contain spoilers. Please stop watching now if you do not want spoilers about the Gran Turismo movie. Now, I'm in the Gran Turismo movie, which is super cool. It's a, like a... Um, it's like a... I feel... I can't even explain it, but... I, I'm in the Gran Turismo... Imagine if you're in the Gran Turismo... It's like mad. But I'm going to go through the story here. So, we know it's a story of overall of Jan Mardenborough, who was an entrant in the GT Academy series, something run between PlayStation and Nissan that was designed to find a racing driver in the Gran Turismo video game that would then go on and race for Nissan in real world motorsports. So racing Nissan GTRs and uh, the, the special GTR prototype they made for Le Mans as well. So this movie starts off with, um, you know, Jan Mardenborough. He's just got a new wheel. It's a Fanatec wheel. Interestingly, not like a Logitech or whatever you might expect, which one I got here. Uh, and you find out that his dad doesn't really approve of the racing. He wants him to go and play football instead. Um, his dad used to be a football player for Cardiff City. Um, the, the Jan's uh, brother's a, a footballer as well. But Jan's like, no, I want to stay here. Um, and then there's a race going on. He's racing some guy called Robin or Rory or something. And uh, I think beats him comfortably. His dad then comes by and says, why are you doing these lines? These lines are a bit unusual. It's not on the racing line because he has a racing line indicator up. And Jan says, well, you know, um, I've learned that it just these are the, these are the lines that actually work better. Everyone else sits to the racing line. I overtake them. So you have that. Meanwhile, we know we meet the executive at Nissan, who I think is an interesting character. I think it could actually be maybe uh, kind of structured a little bit differently. But the Nissan executive has this. He's a British guy, which is very common. Like Japanese companies often have like these, you know, British executives. He pitches to Nissan in Japan about this idea for GT Academy because people aren't that interested in cars anymore and he wants to get back to the passion of wanting to drive cars and that kind of stuff. He gets the approval from Nissan um, and then he needs to find a coach. He goes through a list of, of coaches and ends up with David Harbour, who's kind of like a gruff, cynical American who was in Le Mans driver, but then for reasons we don't know yet, um, you know, his career ended. David Harbour's really cynical. He's like, no, absolutely not. I don't like this sim racing idea. They just get destroyed. Um, I would like... Um, Orlando Broom is the character who's the Nissan executive. I would like Orlando Broom's character to be a little bit more, like, sweaty and cynical and much more about money, much more about it being a pure marketing exercise because that comes through at points, but he's he's quite also a bit more too much on the noble side maybe for me. So I thought that was interesting that... He could have been maybe shorter and sweatier and he just sees it as a big money-making opportunity and that makes David Harbour's character a little bit more interesting by contrast. Um, then we see that David Harbour, at the moment, he's tra his, he's a, a motorsport coach, he, a mechanical coach sort of thing. He's training some like rich kids in Lamborghinis. Um, they go to a dinner. Um, David Perel's there, who's my old mentor. He, he gave me Gran Turismo coaching years ago. He's in the movie because he coached them in real life, shows you what a small world the Gran Turismo community is. Um, the young drivers are really rude to David Harbour. David Harbour just gets up and leaves. He calls Lando Bloom and says, right, I'm in for the project. But as soon as anyone's life is, is in danger, I'm out. So that's kind of his terms. We go back to um, yeah, Mardenborough. He's racing a lot at a gaming cafe. Um, it turns out that uh, he set a really fast time and he got entered for GT Academy. It's going to be a, 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 like a trial round. It's going to be happening the next day. Whoever wins that race actually goes into GT Academy, like the real the real thing with real cars. Um, so we have this sort of trope where like his brother wants him to go to a party. He doesn't want to go. Then he ends up going to the party. He meet, meets a girl that he likes. Then they get interrupted by the police. There's a police chase. They do some Gran Turismo 7 free roam. Um... And he ends up driving away from the police, but meets his dad and the car's damaged in the, in the chase because um, they stole their dad's car to go to the party. The next day is obviously the day of the GT Academy trial, um, but he's working with his dad at the docks. It's actually like the railway uh, like stuff. It's like a common trope. And he's like to his dad, you know, like, why am I really here? And his, and his dad's like, it's not because you didn't think wrong. It's just I want to show you where your life is like if you're going to just play Gran Turismo. At that moment, Yao's like, screw this, gets on his bike, all like drama, goes to the gaming cafe where they're just about to start the race. That's where you see me on the left-hand side as one of the other entrants for GT Academy. I'm Greek, so maybe I need to roll into the Greek stuff, but that's very cool. Um, uh, Jan enters that race and he wins the race very close on the line, if I remember. 
and you go through to GT Academy, the real thing. Then they go to Silverstone, which is actually the Hungaro rink, um, where David Harbour gives them a talk where he's like, I don't believe any of you are going to win. There's like 10 contestants come in. Like they're all kind of like teenage sort of like people from around the world. Um, one of them's like a kind of smarmy American guy. He's like very slick. Jan doesn't really get with him. So David Harbour, the coach, gives this talk. Like, I'm not interested in this. It's a waste of time. Then Orlando Bloom's character kind of brings it back. So, all right, let's go. Let's try it all out. Let's find out who's going to do it. There's a series of trials, like running, strength, driving. People get eliminated. It comes down to a crunch moment where Jan's the next one to be eliminated unless he does well in a particular thing. Um, he's in the car with David Harvard and they're racing the American guy. And David says, overtake him. And Jan tries, but gets on the brake, like locks up the brakes and crashes. Um, and David Harvard's like furious. But Jan's like, no, the brakes, there was some issue with the brakes. And David's like, how do you know? Jan's like, because I've set up the car loads of times. In Gran Turismo, it turns out there's some drama. Like, actually, the brakes were cooked. So Jan keeps his place. Then they do a race to find out who's going to actually um, get the seat for Nissan. It turns out between Jan and the American guy. Um, and Jan just about does it. Um, the American guy's a little bit dirty, if I remember. Jan goes through, gets his contract signed for Nissan, gets on the private jet. Um, now he needs to get his um, FIA license to be able to enter uh, prop, like bigger races. So he's got a series of races where he needs to finish fourth or above to get it. Um, they go to Austria first, the Red Boring. It's looking pretty good for Jan. But then he gets nudged by the same like um, arrogant driver that David Harbour was coaching previously. He's in the same championship. Like some sort of rich kids vibe. Um, goes through a few more races. They go to like Hockenheim, but it's actually uh, Catalonia. <laughs> then they go to the Hungarian. They go to then they actually go to Catalonia. They go to some tracks in Italy, and then the last one's in Dubai. This is the last chance to get the fourth place. Um, and then Jan's racing with that rich kid again, and then the rich kid completely destroys his car. Um, almost takes out Jan as well but like really big crash Jan gets fourth at the end of the race he's furious with the rich guy so he tried to kill us both um but then David Harbour's like come back and it's, they're all happy they got their fourth place so then they're going to the, but I think I'm I feel like I'm missing something no then they go to the Nordschleife so they go to the Nordschleife and this is where Jan very similar to an accident he had in real life um, is doing really well, goes over Flugspatz at the North Star. I've driven the North Star from real life, so the corner's like, it's not a corner, sorry, it's just like a crest, uh, where it's like really fast crest, and he goes out the crest, and the car kind of gets air underneath it and flips over, goes over a barrier and kills someone. And Jan's like really upset that he killed someone. Um, he's in hospital, obviously, like his parents are like really upset because that's the first race they've watched on TV. Um... And it turns out David Harbour, the reason why he's not a racing driver anymore is that he was at Le Mans, he was in the car, crashed with someone else where the other driver killed, uh, other driver was killed. Um, so he, he persuades Jan to come out and finish his lap. So Jan's mentally okay. Um, but meanwhile, bad news from Orlando Bloom because Nissan aren't happy, the other teams are not happy about it. They're trying to sue Nissan. So this weird premise where Nissan want to pull the plug, but also they say, we won't pull the plug if you can get through a sim racer team at Le Mans to finish on the podium so they go to Le Mans they get a prototype car uh, the team of sim racers is Jan the American guy from the final of GT Academy and some other guy they do the race at Le Mans um, there's a similar crash where someone another driver has a really bad accident in front of Jan ends up on fire Jan just sort of cruises around for a bit like he's shell shocked and then there's this trope in the movie where he listens to certain music before races and then David Harbour plays in the music over the radio and that gets Jan back in it. Jan's smashing it. The other drivers come in, not so good. It's a last in for Jan. He needs to absolutely nail it. Um, he's back in ninth place. There's an issue with a pit stop. And then he gets he asks for permission to do his lines like he did in the game. His dad was asking him, why do, why do you not go the racing line? He said, because I know it's faster. So he does those other lines and he finishes the race in P3 on the last corner big celebrations and that's the movie and then there's some bits at the end comparing like the story to real life Jan Mardenborough who you know did pretty much the same things um and the music as well all this kind of stuff and he was also a stunt driver in the movie so it's a really nice sort of pitch there's some other stuff in there like there's a romance interest um there's some sort of emotional moments as well um 
with the parents. Um, so, but it's kind of up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, really interesting movie from perspective if you like Gran Turismo, if you like racing. If I think it's obviously one that kids can watch and the parents can watch as well. Um, if you're not interested in racing or cars, then then you really got to love the story. But if you're interested in cars, then I think it's going to be a great movie because the sounds are just so good of the cars. Like some of the race, like the one the race in Austria and Dubai, like those races were shot so incredibly well. Um, really nicely shot races. But just wanted to give you a summary of the plot there. I'm in the movie, so therefore it surely has to be a good movie. Let me know if you have any thoughts on the movie as well, if you've seen it below, and I will see you. See you next time.